Hello, I, I guess we'll start. Can any one of you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, uh, thank you. Thanks for joining me for the webinar. I guess it's not a very good time for a lot of people. So we'll just start and then we will post uh, the videos later on. So I will start to give an introduction of uh, the software we have uh, for a couple of slides and then we will do a demo. So if you can see my screen, um, the title of this presentation is about design, communication and collaboration. So we will not only just provide a design software, we actually have a software solution for communication and collaboration and over time we know uh, for digital dental services it's always a big problem for uh, doctors and labs or, or labs and labs or between doctors to communicate their cases so uh, we have uh, not only design software we have a chair side version of the software so the doctors can do a treatment planning within a few minutes and they can send their cases to the labs to finalize the design and make aligners. We also have the implant software. By communication and collaboration, we mean we have a communication software which is called GTalk. You can find it from Microsoft uh, App Store. It's essentially a messenger. You can send uh, data, text, files, and but it can you can do model review, and you can also send data from our software. So there's an integration between our orthodontic software and the communication software. Then we have a service module it's called aligner bot it's an automatic service we are going to give another uh, workshop in a week to introduce what this can do so basically what we can do today is we offer uh, in this picture you see we have a chair side version of the software we have a lab version we have the communication software to connect people together so that's how it looks like uh, we'll talk about a little bit more about the communication software. So main message we want to deliver for this design software is that we support not only inter scan but also CBCT integration. Uh, we have been uh, having this for more than five years. Uh, we are a couple of years ahead of Invisalign and we still have more functions than Invisalign. And we can generate aligner models for direct printing. We can also do bracket bonding. We can generate virtual routes even without CT data. And we can also integrate other data sets like uh, X-rays, uh, uh, facial scans. We, com we can compose them together and do the simulation uh, so that the doctors can evaluate their treatment plan with the pictures and the x-rays. Uh, we can also design aligner models. So this uh, video clip shows you how we can review the aligner models in the software. So we can go through one step at a time. So to review all the aligner design for direct printing purposes. Of course, we generate arch models for aligner manufacturers for thermal forming too. Uh, I will mention the automatic design. We are going to introduce this uh, next week. <laughs> well, I will skip the demo video because we are going to do a demo. Uh, in a regular process, uh, this shows you the major steps we will go through. Uh, assuming we have an intraoral scan, 
of course you can do model scan. It comes with boundaries like this. The software will fix the model, clean the boundaries, create a solid model like this, and then extract the teeth, create roots and attachments, do the movement planning, generate arch models for aligner manufacturing. With the arch model, we can also generate a fixture jig together with the trimming path. So if you have an automatic trimming machine, so the trimming path data can be sent into the machine so you can do automatic aligner trimming. We also have a bracket bounding approach. This is a direct bounding approach. We directly generate the guide to put onto the patient's mouth. We don't have, uh, you, you don't need to do any extra work except the printing. When we do ship the, uh, we do sell the jigs that can connect the brackets and the bounding guide. But this is not the focus of today. We can introduce more later. With our latest software, we can help labs and the clinics to perform treatment planning, design models for aligner manufacturing within an hour. And actually, we can do the same thing for implant surgical guides. We have all the functions you would need to be do by any chance you do implants. Uh, similar process we can apply to bracket bonding. Users can finish everything within an hour. Uh, we have some slides here for implant, so, uh, but it's again, it's not our focus today. I'll skip this for now. So let's go to take a look at the software. Uh, the software itself comes with audio uh, introduction and guidance. It basically tells you what to do in each of the step, and it also tells you when your mouse uh, move over a function, it tells you what it, it is, how to do it, and what do you expect, and what need to be avoided. So uh, those kind of introductions come with the computer so uh, software. So you, when you say, I am clicking the software, you will hear the computer, the software is telling you what to do. And uh, in the middle of the process, I may turn off, turn off the audio so we can uh, explain or we can discuss. But I'll start with the software right now. That's um, for this is for the design version, or we can consider that's a lab version or for service providers. And this is a chair side version. We can, as I mentioned earlier, we can finish treatment planning within a few minutes. And we do have a planner version that uh, helps the doctors to review plans from other people from other version of the software to make adjustment. So this it, this couldn't create a plan from the scratch, uh, but others too. So that's so we have the three versions of the software. Uh, we have a communication software. We can talk about that in uh, a bit. Then we have implant solutions. We will have a, uh, some more webinar in the future. I'll start the also software, and we will let the software itself talk about what to do. Welcome to Guide Mia Ortho Plus. You are in training mode. This can be turned off by the audio button on the status bar area. Ortho Plus is your complete solution for orthodontic treatment planning and appliance design. It can work with CBCT scan and optical scans, or optical scans only. When your mouse hovers over a user interface widget, the system will show and tell the details of the underlying functions. If you haven't done so, please register on www.guidemia.com and use the username and password to sign into the software. The login is optional, but you do need so for support and some cloud-related functions. Use the Load Models button to create a case with model scans or intraoral scans. For Ortho Plus, use the Load CT button to create a new case. You can click the picture in the window to start a slideshow of some basic information and your recent design cases. So those are the cases I worked before they show up here as a history. 
sometimes if we have many cases, we may lose track of what we are working on. So we can use this to review what we have done. Then we can sort of create a project with optical skin files, but no CBCT scan. Select the upper jaw skin first. The lower jaw skin must be in an articulated position of the upper jaw skin. Perform color or curvature analysis for the model. There are three indices values are used to analyze colors. This is the first one. There, there are three indices. After the selected color index slider or curvature slider has been adjusted to obtain the best segmented area of the crowns or curved areas, click this button to continue. The Load lower jaw model. The system will try to locate the lower jaw scan by matching the file names. If it fails to do so, you will need to choose the file. This is the so-called lucky button. It is the tool you use to perform treatment planning and design in a guided manner. You click the button step by step to finish your workflow. The instructions next to this button tells you the details of the current step and what's next. So we can just follow the instruction, click this button. The system has identified the occlusion plane and control points for creating arch curves. Please make necessary adjustment and click lucky button to continue. Normally you will see two spherical handles on the upper incisors. Make sure they are on the middle line of the lingual surface, and at roughly the location the lower incisors will touch the upper in desired positions. There are other two handles on the molar or postmolar area. They should be on roughly the center of the tooth occlusal area. If not, click and drag the handles to the good position. When you are adjusting the handles, you should see the occlusal plane is changed. The center line of the plane will determine the final center line of the alignment so it may not necessarily be the current center line of the upper jaw. Extract and adjust the crown boundaries. There are two horizontal bars on each dental arch curve. They are used to define the range of tooth segmentation. Before click the lucky button, adjust them so that they are close to the last posterior teeth for treatment planning. The boundaries are the key to tooth segmentation. They don't have to completely follow the actual tooth boundaries. The software will make adjustments especially at the interproximal area when performing tooth segmentation. However, it is necessary to make sure the boundary curves do represent the curvature changes of the tooth boundaries. This is the so-called aligner bot button. When the data is ready, this button will be on. This button will automatically finish all the required planning and design. You can just enjoy your time and watch this to be finished. In a typical workflow, you can always make adjustment when this is done and then update the plan or design as desired. So for the demo purposes, uh, we will just use this button to continue the workflow. Other than just Th this is the so. In case this lucky button dialog is not in the status you desired, you can use this go to button the switch to a different stage. It will pop up a menu so you can choose one of them. Sometimes uh, if your mouse move over a button, it's going to tell you what it does. Uh, but if I just now I was accidentally moving. Click the lucky button to fix models. Now if you are not sure about scan quality, it is recommended to start a liner bot after model fixing. For more information about all-in-one fix, please refer to the tools in the data processing page. It is recommended that you do other fixes before this step or move on with the fixing tool in this step. For example if you want to fix plaster model bubbles, extend models, trim model boundary, etc., use the tools in the data processing page, and then come back to this wizard page and continue with the final model fixing. This entire scan has relatively good quality, so we will choose the middle level of the model fixing. Um, this will fix, in general, uh, scan file quality issues like small holes, overlapping triangles. If you have an extremely bad situation, very bad model boundary interproximal area problems, you may want to use this one. Some specific uh, entire scanners we know for sure, uh, like one brand, 
uh, almost 100% of their cases have issues we'll have to use this, but most of the cases we would just use this quick fix button. So as you know, we take At this moment, you can use a liner bot to complete planning and design, or create the base models by trimming and extending jaw models, or using the bounding box. If you click the lucky button to continue with model creation, the system will automatically trim the model boundaries according to the extracted aligner boundary. The automatic trip click the lucky button to finish the base models. Before you continue, if any of the models show gray colors on the external side, click the lucky button to segment teeth. At this moment, you can draw mesial distal directions for the teeth for severe misaligned cases, or press lucky button to generate the tooth boundaries and segment the teeth. In the workflow panel, tooth segmentation page, you can set the tooth number and then draw mesial distal axis for the given tooth dot in case you want to do this for all the teeth, you only need to set the first number. The system will automatically increase the number. If you want to remove or modify an axis you created, you can draw another one on the tooth dot it will automatically replace the existing one. You can also drag the endpoints after you finish specifying the axis. The tooth segmentation is now finished for the jaw. You can manually adjust crown boundaries, segment more teeth, or delete and resegment the teeth. Otherwise, click the lucky button to perform post-processing and root creation. Adjust tooth orientations, or skip the step, then click the lucky button to continue. Use middle mouse button to click a blue arrow on crown occlusal side, you can then adjust the crown orientation. It is highly recommended to make sure all the tooth orientations are good. The automatic tooth alignment strongly depends on the tooth orientations. So we will check each of the teeth and find out if your axis is about right. Sometimes like this one, like this one I just adjusted. Uh, it's not ideal. We can make some adjustment to use the mouse buttons so that when we do alignment, it will align the teeth better. Generate the tooth boundaries and segment the teeth for lower jaw. When we are doing the segmentation, the system actually also fix the crown boundaries, smooth them, and uh, fix the interproximal area. So filling material between the teeth. And also, uh, as we mentioned earlier, it find, uh, finds the tooth axis. It does everything automatically. And of course, you can make adjustment. As I am showing this step by step. The tooth segmentation is now finished for the jaw. You can manually adjust crown boundaries, segment more teeth, or delete and resegment the teeth. Otherwise, click the lucky button to perform post-processing and root creation. It is recommended that you inspect all the tooth boundaries and make necessary adjustment. Just right-click on the tooth model you want to adjust, and select the menu item. If some teeth are not segmented, you can look for the manual segmentation tool on the left side of the workflow panel. If you are using orthoclick version, expand the lucky button dialog using the arrow button, adjust occlusion plane for tooth alignment.
Adjust arch curves and align automatically for an initial plan. Click the lucky button to preview the tooth alignment. Manual adjustment of tooth positions. Because uh, my move mouse will go over to the left side. Here it is. Can you ignore that? Let's look at this. This is a simple. This is to tell the system try to perform tooth extraction in the initial plan. This is a simplified approach to set allow IPRs. With this option, 10 teeth from anterior will allow to have IPRs, and they have the same allowed limit. If suggested protraction or retraction value, negative value means retraction. Suggested expansion value, negative value means retraction. So if, if this option is turned on, the system will try to determine all the major control parameters of the tooth arrangements. If any values in the table above are changed, this will be unchecked. This button will apply the parameters and generate initial plan. In case of automatic design, the tooth segmentation has not been performed. This will simply save the parameters for later use. This button will... In case this lucky button dialog is not in the status you desired, you can use this go to button the switch to a different stage. It will pop up a menu so you can choose one of them. Okay, so, so we are doing niche alignment. It's going to align the teeth against the arch curves. We have, uh, for sometimes, look, if you look at this tooth, the movements can be... Click powerful. the lucky button to finalize alignment. We have a control so that we don't move the teeth so much. There are settings in the, under the tools menu we can control. We want to allow substantial movement or we don't. We can check that. We'll finalize the alignment. We generate the virtual roots and we generate colors on the root model so that we know with this uh, virtual root model at any point for example if we look at this tooth we know at it at the apical center the the movements the buccolingual movement can be mapped into the color of above this range that's a 1.5 millimeter range meaning we know assuming the tooth is has a length like this we are having 1.5 millimeter. Click the lucky button to enter upper jaw adjustment. So that will tell us if the movement is too much, is safe, or is possible. So this uh, movement information, color information, give us some visual feedback. Now we can go into individual tooth adjustment. Click the lucky button to enter lower jaw adjustment. So if we look at the current alignment itself, the upper jaw, then you can make your adjustment. I'm going to do just a two simple adjustment so we can see how it works. For example, if we want to rotate this tooth, we can click and move it. And if we want to move this one, we click this. And then we can also use Drag this slider to move the tooth in Drag this slider to move the tooth in buccal lingual orientation. Drag this slider to move the tooth in buccal lingual orientation. And if we want to check if there is any collision. This option will turn on and off the visual feedbacks of collisions and gaps between adjacent teeth. Then if we, for example, now if we move this tooth, we will see there Manual adjustment of tooth positions. Okay, you have this, function. this function will move teeth along the arch curve from or toward the middle incisors so as to remove collisions. If the allowed IPRs are set, this function will honor the allowed values. If the option to check collusion with neighbors is turned on, the image window will instantly show the current collisions or gaps. Sometimes this may need to be done multiple times to completely remove collisions between adjacent teeth. It is recommended to always use this function to finalize manual adjustment unless certain IPRs are desired and have been planned. Now we can go to Click the lucky button to enter bracket design or movement planning. 
For a liner design you will enter into the stage to plan movement steps. Once you are in the step, if you are using Ortho Plus, on the left side, you should be in the page for movement planning. Use the tools to run simulation, reset the steps and movement orders, adjust stages to collision avoidance. If you are using OrthoClick, expand the lucky button dialog, you should see the buttons to play simulation. In the meantime, you will see a movement table in the lower part of the screen. The rows correspond to teeth, and columns to steps. This function to sound for a moment. Okay, so if you look at the lower down now, we also created this uh, speed curve, and we have the initial alignment, and make some adjustment to the teeth. As we mentioned earlier uh, about the uh, buckling movements, if we look at this one, now it tells us the buck, the apical point movement is about two and a, two millimeters and a quarter. So if we rotate this tooth, you can see the number changes a lot. But on the top, we don't really see much difference. So this basically tells us uh, the root model is very helpful. Even if you only want to make slight, slight adjustment on the crown, you can see the plant itself is largely improved. Uh, so the buckling movement is only half of the initial movement now, so meaning it could be a lot easier, a lot simpler to move uh, clinically. So the same thing if we make some adjustment to this one, then we can do that. It also has other functions to uh, align the teeth along the arch curve. We can adjust the arch curve so that it will follow the arch curve better. And we also have a bracket bounding approach uh, method uh, functions. I mean. So for this, now we can use this button to adjust the IPR so that we don't have collisions along the arch curve. So you see now the collision is gone. We can also change the color mode here. If we don't want to see this color mode, so we can enter this uh, just white color mode. And we can turn on and off the zoots too. If we want to turn off the zoots, now we see the original color of the teeth. So that's what uh, how it, it was. But when, when we are doing the zoots, they are all white. Then we can change the view of the models here. And also you can check how, what is a bite, what is the occlusion between the lower jaw and upper jaw by checking this occlusion distance map. So now you see how, how the upper and the lower teeth are contacting each other at the uh, up to the surface, surfaces, if we want to make adjustment, for example, then you will see this number and this color will change. That. So that's how we make adjustment and how we check the occlusion. If everything is good, we want to continue. I will just turn off this color mode. Let's turn on the uh, audio guidance again so we can continue this. We don't do bracket bonding. Click the lucky button to enter a liner or bracket bonding guide design. So before we go to the liner model design, we can do a little bit more uh, planning here. In this page, this is the so-called movement table. This is the so-called movement table. It can be turned on or off with the movement table button on the bottom of the application window. By default its visibility is controlled by the software according to the system status. The rows are corresponding to teeth and the columns to the steps. When there is no movement for a tooth in a step, the step will show no number. When a step is defined as a keyframe, the text in the cell will be shown in red. Right click on any of the cells, you can access and delete the selected step for the tooth. A keyframe represents a post and the tooth movements will go through. This function will set a step as keyframe and clear all th this function will set a step as keyframe and clear all the movements between last keyframe and this step. 
By doing this, you can create a static stage for the tooth, meaning, the tooth will remain in the same place for the steps in between. This function will set a step as keyframe, and clear all the movements between last keyframe and this step. Reset, simulate the movements of all the teeth in all steps. You can always rotate and zoom the 3D image windows while the simulation is running. You can also perform some other operations, such as turn on and off root display, show or hide, show or hide the virtual tooth roots of the lower jaw models. Simulate the movements of all the teeth in all steps. You can always rotate and zoom the 3D image windows while the simulation is running. Show or hide the lower jaw crowns and tissue. Show or simulate the movements of all the teeth in all steps. You can always rotate and zoom the 3D image windows while the simulation is running. When this option is on, the soft tissues will be displayed, and they will simulate the movements of all the teeth in all steps. You can always rotate and zoom the 3D image windows while the simulation is running. You can also perform some other operations, show or hide the lower jaw crowns and tissue models. At this time, the system will do one more check of all the collisions between each of the steps. It's going to adjust each of the step so that there is no collision between the teeth. After this is finished, you will see the steps. Some of the steps are changing color to red, meaning there are different differences. We determine those steps are the checkpoint. Basically, we will make sure every single Automatically add attachments or force ridges. You can always delete or adjust automatically added attachments, or add new ones. The manual tools can be found in the attachment page. Referring to the audio explanations for, add case tag for upper jaw. So, as you can tell here, the guidance, the tool here, what we call this lucky button, it will tell you what's going on next step. But at this step, if you want to do anything, want to make any adjustment, you can do it here. For example, if I want to rotate the attachment, then I want to adjust the attachment of this one, orientation of this one too. I can do that, I, or I can make this one bigger. Here are some here are some guidelines for determining when attachments are needed and what types of attachments. Here are some guidelines for determining when attachments are needed and what types of attachment shapes may be required in orthodontic clear aligner treatment. When attachments are needed, complex tooth movements, attachments are often needed when there are complex tooth movements required, such as rotation, extrusion, or bodily movement. Severe malocclusions, in cases of severe malocclusions, where teeth need to be moved significantly, attachments can be beneficial. Intrusion or extrusion, if certain teeth need to be intruded, green... It, it has a long uh, discussion or explanation about attachments and the force ridges. We don't have to hear that. Uh, but what's going on here is we automatically add all the attachments. Then we can make adjustments as we want to. Uh, or we can delete attachments. We can add different attachments. Uh, we can also support... Uh, automatic type, automatic deter determine the type, or we want to user define the types. So everything it can be you know controlled by the user. And we also have functions to add uh, buttons and hooks, and you may add virtual teeth as the spacers here, so that we can maintain the spaces between teeth if there are any missing teeth. We can replace the tooth model by a different one. That's for uh, young kids when you want to do the, in case we want to do the, uh, uh, deal with the emerging teeth, we can have those tools. Then if we 
are happy with all the attachments, then we can continue with the liner model design. Because it's just two more steps, so I will turn off this video audio. We'll continue with this. We can add the case tag for the moment. Let's say for the upper jaw. Uh, before that, we can take a look at our options. We can turn on aligner design or off for demo. I'm going to turn off this one. We can generate a liner boundary file for treatment purposes. Uh, we can show that. Then we can, for arch models, we can do hollow. We can hollow the model or we can create a solid model. We can fill in the undercuts or gaps between the teeth. And then we can check the case tags to be uh, protrusion or a slot, or they can be on a cross too. So we have those options. If we continue this button, we will add a case tag. Uh, typically, you will get the case tags at the right position. And the numbers will be replaced later. So we will just continue this workflow. Then we determine we don't want to have 30 aligner models. Uh, we maybe we only have, have uh, only want to have five, so we can control the numbers. We we'll can generate the models. So we create a folder. Let's create a folder called Design One, Design Two, for example. We enter this folder. We give it a name called design two. Then we save the entire project as demo four. Now the system will automatically generate all the models on its own. So we'll just wait this to be finished. Then we have a set of functions here to review the designs. Now you see uh, we finish the first one. Then we are going to do this next. So depending on how many models you choose, it's going to, uh, for five models, it's going to be finished uh, very quickly. Now we can work on the lower jaw. Add a case tag and generate the models. Again, we select the folder we just created. We call it design two. So all those files have been generated and they are production ready. Uh, this is for web review, we'll skip this file. Now let's take a look at the model review function here. Let's say we want to go back to review the upper jaw. We go check the first model. This is our first arch model for making the aligners. So you see uh, we have the model. If we zoom in, you can see the model quality. And we have a case tag on here and a case tag on here. And we have uh, interproximal area or filling materials. We have attachments. We have the bottom. We have the holes or other geometries for fixture, depending on what kind of fixtures we choose. And you see this box. It tells you we can edit the design. Before I drag this, you will see we have uh, the material added to fill the un fill in undercuts. We can make we can adjust the position. For example, I want to move this to the bottom side. We can make that movement. We can even make it bigger. So that's kind of editing functions we have, like this one. I double click. I can move this. So that's for the eventual uh, 
model review and uh, fixing if you want to change anything uh, after that we can click this button to save the model we will go to the next then we can go through all of the models by this or we can go to the load again so that's the model generation and review so that basically f uh, finished our workflow to do all the trimmer planning and design pretty much only with this button and uh, of course we have a lot of functions here I, we have shown some of them so how can we work use those tools the second part of this demo will include the communication part uh, if we look at this menu we can share the whole design a project the current planning or all the steps even the treatment plan or report to other people through the software gtalk software so let's do a couple of things to fin uh, before we finish this case let's say i want to design i want to show the whole design to my contact so uh, here is a screen of my another computer we have the gtalk software running over there so that's the files we sent earlier but let's say for now i want to share this model the uh, final design to the contact i can go here and uh, send all in one model for current step i will choose my contact this is my contact then I'll say send this current uh, design. I call it, call, give it a name called design two that we did earlier. That's one. So we would we generate the entire plan as the three D model. We send this model through. Uh, this is on my, my computer through this um, uh, GTalk software to the receiver which is my contact by another computer if we go to another computer this is a remote desktop we have this file already if you look at the size you will be amazed it's only 700k but if i click that you see we have the four 3d models here attachment teeth uh, crowns everything so you can adjust the colors from here so if we do that it looks brighter it looks like what we have here so this is a 3d viewer not a not just an image review but it's a 3d viewer and so that's how we can send cases to the partners to review a plan and also we can go here say instead of sending single files let's send all the steps for review we call it design 2-1 this is going to generate a full set of files for the uh, 3d model review it's not just an animation it's everything we will be sending to the other party so we will say uh, in this computer in a few moments we will receive that file As you can see, it's a messenger. Uh, the labs and doctors, they can talk over this messenger. They can share idea, ideas, screens. They can send models as I just did. And also they can send uh, reports with all the videos and uh, PDF file. I will play those after we finish. Uh, I sent those reports earlier as a sample. You can tell, see how it looks like. Let's wait for this model to finish. So now I said, okay, send to my contact. You will see the, the file is going to another computer. The file transfer is done. If I click this, it's going to view, uh, bring up the viewer and show you the models so you can go through the steps by dragging this slider 
or you can play the animation using this button. While this is running, you can even type the view. And you can also say, I don't want to see the lower jaw. Uh, that's only the upper jaw plays animation. Or I want to see the lower, but it's not the upper jaw. We can do other way around. Again, when this is running, you can rotate the view to look at this from different orientations. So this is about the communication part. Uh, same as sending reviews and uh, uh, reports and uh, video files. Let's say this is a review with picture and uh, PDF information about patient information, doctor information, uh, movement statistics, uh, overall plan of where you have attachments, uh, how much is the movement of, on each of the teeth, IPRs, and uh, over the uh, occlusion picture here. And in addition to this PDF file, we have a couple of uh, video files which we can, oh, I close that one, we can do it from here. A couple of video files which, which we can review the movements. For example, we check, uh, check out the tooth movements of the lower jaw. This is a video file. Uh, the software generates this video file and sent over to the contact with the GTOP software. Uh, as you can see, that's the simulation of the jaw. Then again, it's a video file, so you, cannot, you can stop the video, but you cannot rotate the model. It's a bit different from what we have earlier with the 3D model. So going back to our slides, we were talking about design and uh, communication and uh, collaboration. So in this demo, we have gone through the design software, do the treatment planning and the design. We use the GTAC software to share a treatment plan, to share the report and then we can also share other information and we can send text and make, even make audio and video call to with this software and one more thing about this software is it's an end-to-end -end encrypted communication web3 technology no server at this moment we offer this for no cost too so you can have your contacts install the software you can easily send the files uh, between you and them. So that will make the uh, data sharing and the workflow a lot easier and a lot more convenient. The users no longer need to go to websites, download the files, etc. You don't even need a, a web portal for this now. You can use the software, share everything of the treatment plans as I just did uh, to the consumers. So doctors, this is an overview of the software and the basic uh, workflow and how we deal with the communication and the collaborations. I guess we will, uh, I'm sure you have questions. Uh, please drop me a message on Facebook or email. We can talk about this later or we can talk this uh, about this now. We have a few more minutes to go. Dr. Shah, I will send you the full video after this meeting.